Hi everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, let us take a look into one of the important annotation in JUnit framework that is at test annotation. Well, at test annotation is one of the fundamental annotation in a JUnit framework. At test annotation marks a method as a test method. Well, whenever we want to make a method as a test method, then we can go ahead and annotate that method with at test annotation. JUnit automatically runs all the methods annotated with at test annotation. Well, basically in order to create a JUnit test cases, what we'll do, we'll create a test class within that we create a methods and we annotate those methods with at test annotation. Next, when we run the, you know, test class, JUnit automatically run all the test methods which are annotated with at test annotation. We don't have to manually run, you know, test methods one by one. When we run the test class, JUnit automatically run all the test methods within that test class. Okay, so we don't have to manually run test methods one by one. Next, use at test annotation from org api package. Well, some of the students may confuse like from where at test annotation should be imported. So make sure that you import at test annotation from org api package. Next, test method can be public, protected, or default visibility. In JUnit 5, test methods can be public, protected, or default visibility. All right. Now let us go ahead and let's create an example and let us see add test annotation in an action. So let us head over to IntelliJ IDEA and here go to our project, go to this base package, right click on it, new, and then choose Java class. Let's give class name as Pacto real within a factorial class let's create a method public int let's give method name as factorial and let's pass the method argument of type int let's give argument name as number and then within a method let's write the logic to find the factorial of a number so initially let us declare factorial variable as one and then let's create a for loop to iterate over uh, numbers. So here int i equals to one, the factorial should start from the one and then i less than equal to number and then i plus plus. All right. And within a for loop, factorial equal to factorial and then multiply by i simple logic and finally let us return the factorial perfect now we have created factorial method it finds the factorial of a number and return the factorial perfect next what we need to do is we need to unit test this factorial method for that we are going to write the j unit test case so let us go and let us first create a test class so here we have a factorial class in order to create a test class for this class just select this class right click show contact actions and click on this create test and class name is factorial test so let us keep as it is and destination package so let us give net dot java guides dot annotations we keep all the annotations related code inside this package next go ahead and click on ok well notice here the annotations package is created within that a factorial test class is created okay perfect so this is the test class within a test class let's create a test method so here public and then wide let's give a method name as factorial test perfect so this is the normal method let us make this method as a test method by using at test annotation so we just have to annotate this method with at test annotation from org.junit.jupyter.api package all right so basically we use add test annotation to mark this method as a test method next junit will automatically identify this method as a test method and it will execute okay perfect next within this test method let's create an instance of factorial class next factorial class has a method factorial so let us call factorial method and then pass the number Let's say 5. We want to find the factorial of number 5. Okay, next, this factorial method returns the factorial. 
for that let's declare one local variable int actual result perfect next we need to verify whether the actual result is correct or not for that let us use assert methods so let us use one of the assert method that is assert equals so this assert equals method we use to verify that the expected value is equal to actual value and notice here there are multiple overloaded assert equals method and we need to choose the appropriate one in our case we need to choose the assert equals method it takes a parameter subtype int so let us select the first one and notice here assert equals method first takes expected and then second argument actual okay so let us select this method and then pass the expected result 120 as we know that the factorial upper number 5 is 120 so we are expecting that the actual result should be 120 and then pass actual result all right so this assert equals method verify that the expected value is equal to actual value if the expected value is equal to actual value then this test will pass if the expected value is not equal to actual value then the assert fails and this test will be marked as a failed okay next let us go ahead and let's run this JNA test case and then let us see the result and there we go you can see test passed because the factorial of number 5 is 120 and the expected value you know is equal to actual value that's why the test is passed next let us say we we give the wrong expected result then this test should fail for example if i run this test again you can see test failed because the expected is 121 but was 120 okay next let us find the factorial of number one so basically the factorial of number one is one right and we are, we are expecting the value one next let us run the genuine test case and there we go test passed next let us verify the factorial logic by passing number two so number factorial of number two is two and then run the test case and there we go test passed next factorial of number four should be 24 let's run the test case again and there we go test passed it means the factor the factorial related logic we have written in a factorial method is working as expected so this is how we can unit test the factorial logic by writing the unit test case like this all right so let us summarize the important points about add test annotation well we use add test annotation to mark a method as a test method and JUnit will automatically run all the test methods which are annotated with add test annotation so basically when we create a multiple test methods within a test class and we run the test class then JUnit will automatically detect all the test methods within a test class and it will run automatically we don't have to manually run each test method one by one okay and next in JUnit for you the test method can be a public protected or default for example here we have a test method with visibility public so if I remove this public and make this test method as a default and if I run the test case this should work okay next we can make this test method as a protected as well protected and if I run the test again you can see test passed it means in JUnit 5 onwards we can make the test method as a public protected or default next here the test class we can make this test class as a public for example public and if i run the test class it should work okay if i make this test class default it should also work and if i make this class as a protected this won't work all right it means the test class should be public or default okay so remember this visibility of test class as well as test methods all right so this is all about add test annotation all right great i will see you in the next lecture